Howdy, everyone. Well, like I've said before, there's a lot of, uh, at least for me, there's a lot of jumping around from one task to another, to another, to another. And today is yet another one of those events. So I had originally planned on doing my fuel line. I was going to go ahead and run the fuel line from the valve through the various brackets and out of the fuselage and to the wings. This fitting over in here. So yesterday I fooled around with this side. I was going to connect the line, fabricate and connect the line for the right tank. And I planned on using this supplied uh, super soft 3 8 aluminum tubing. But um, I, I managed to mangle that line pretty good. And I figured that it probably wasn't worth the effort to try to fool around with it now at this point. I think it will be easier to do actually with the wings off. Um, simply because I think I, I think if the wing is out of the way, I can potentially run the line this way and, and feed it through and be able to get my bends and stuff in it. But what's important is I've got a dimension now from the side of the fuselage over to this fitting on the wing. I've got a measurement here and I've also got a measurement from where it, the line comes through the side of the fuselage and then there's a 90 degree bend to go back toward the spar and then there's another 90 degree or so bend to come out this way and feed through this bracket. So that S bend here I've also got dimensions for. Basically what I had done yesterday, I had the line fitted and it got mangled through here. It was all over the place and then I couldn't get the bend right over for the valve. So I just cut it to get it out. But I kept the S bends and the length of line that comes through over to this fitting. I kept that part so I'll be able to duplicate that and get that correct when I redo it. So my battery's getting ready to die, so I'm going to wrap this up. Basically, I'm done out here at site A1 now. I never thought I would say it, but I am so incredibly happy to take my airplane apart. I never thought I'd be happy to take it apart, but I actually am. I'm looking forward to getting it completely disassembled, get it back in to the shop, and I can start wrapping up all these loose ends and do some final assembly on a lot of the internal components. So I'm going to get this thing disassembled, move it back into the shop, do some reorganizing, and then we're going to hit it. All right, I will talk to you guys later. Howdy, everyone. We are back inside of Site A. So we're back in the shop. The arrangement that you see here is basically the same setup I had when I was working on the wing skins. So what my plan is now, since I've got everything back in the shop, if you remember when we had things out in the garage, we had fitted the wing fairings. And there were certain hole locations for the wing fairings. You can see them here with the black lines. So these locations need to be opened up for I believe it's a number eight screw and they need to be uh, dimpled for a number eight screw I believe I have to look at the plans again They're either dimpled or countersunk but they have to be enlarged and recessed for a number eight screw and they also have to be fitted with nut plates and then the locations that are not used for the wing fairings of course will get regular regular rivets so, um, I've got a clean in between the skin and the flange of the rib. There's probably some uh, shavings in there from drilling. I've got to clean that out. And then I'm going to go ahead, of course, reference the, the uh, plans and the written instructions and start getting these nut plates in here, start getting things dimpled and opened up for number eight screw. I'll do that on both wings. And then I'll go ahead and I'll probably enlarge and dimple 
the holes that are on the fairings themselves. I'm not going to trim. I don't believe I might. I might not trim these back. I may wait and do that upon final assembly. But I would at least like to get potentially the, um, the screw holes enlarged and dimpled. And I think basically to store these, I may just go ahead and attach them to the wing. But we'll see. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll coil them back up like they were and put them back downstairs in the basement. But I want to get all the loose ends tied up on the wings. I want to get the holes taken care of like I just talked about. I want to go ahead and verify the length of these rod ends. I want to make sure I've got good depth inside of the rod ends. Um, and then if, if I'm happy with the depth, the length of engagement in, inside of each tube on each end, if I'm happy with that, then I'm going to go ahead and make spacers for these, um, depending on which ones need them, probably all of them. Oh, what else needs to be done with the wings? I can't think of anything right off hand, but that's basically what I want to do. I want to get the loose ends tied up on the wings, everything on the wings. Then I'm going to stick them back over in this area where they came from, and then I can move the fuselage and start working on it. So let me get cracking on, on these wings, on these fairings, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Howdy, everyone. Alrighty, so I've, I've been cleaning up some loose ends on the wings since I've brought them back in to the shop from fitting them on the fuselage. So the first thing I did was I came back and I put in the rivets that hold basically the skin to the flange of the rib. I didn't rivet any of these initially, but now that I know where the attachment nut plates are supposed to be. I went ahead and put these rivets in on both wings. So now I'm getting ready to drill these existing open holes out so that I can dimple them and put nut plates on for a number eight screw. On the bottom of the wing, which you see here, the, the skin has the black lines. Remember, these black lines are to to reference the holes that are already in the bottom of the fuselage skin. So the bottom wing overlaps this skin here. These holes already exist. And then you match those to the holes on the bottom of the fuselage or the bottom of the wing using these lines as a reference, so, and we've already talked about that. But one thing that I noticed was on the plan, this is the fairing here, and then this is the fuselage skin. It says right here, bottom inboard skin, the 704L. This is the fuselage. I'm sorry. This is the fuselage. The center bottom skin is here. And this then is the wing, the bottom wing skin. But when you look, they only call out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight locations for nut plates. And those are supposed to be the K1100s. That's this symbol here, which is this symbol here. And you can see again, this is the, the fuselage skin bottom. This is the bottom of the wing. And there are eight locations. But when you look, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Why is that? Well, if you come back and you look at the instructions for the wing rivets, so back when you originally built the wing, you can see here this is the bottom view of the wing. And it says right here, do not rivet, leave open for center bottom skin attachment, see drawing 38. And on here, you can see that you basically skip every other rivet. And you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there's actually another one up here, which would be 11. So when I did my wings and I did my skins, this is what I referenced. 
because this attaches to the bottom skin of the fuselage. And this, uh, this is um, mildly confusing, but it all works out. So I would, I would use this legend as a reference to get the correct nut plates and things like that on this assembly, but don't worry so much about the whole locations. This is how I built my wing according to this plan. So these are the uh, rivet, the rivet locations that I used and I left the rest open. Here's the top of the wing. These are the rivet locations that I used and I left the other ones open. And these worked out just fine with the fairing. The holes in the fairing were already pre-punched and those matched perfectly with the holes that were left open here on the top of the wing skin. The bottom of the wing skin were left open as drawn here and then those were matched Those were put on, when the wings were put on here, those locations with the black lines were referenced onto this skin, and then this skin was drilled to match. So just something to keep in mind. Again, it's a little confusing because what you end up doing initially when you build the wings is this. But then later on in the build, when you're getting ready to fit fairings and attach the bottom of the wing to the bottom of the fuselage, it's slightly different. So just wanted to point that out. It took me almost five and a half minutes to explain that, but there you have it. All right, I'm going to get to dimpling and uh, get to uh, putting in some nut plates.